In this video, I'm going to tell you about the importance of proper lighting for your hobby area and some nice solutions that I like to use that might be able to help you with that. I have an upcoming haircut appointment, so the last days of the Fez are upon us. It's a little known fact that we are all getting older. It's not really little known fact. Everybody knows we're getting older. And as you get older, or at least as I've been getting older, I have been noticing that my eyesight has been changing. Many of you have maybe also noticed this as well. When I was younger, I would be sitting and reading, I don't know, like a comic book or whatever, something like that. Not an electronic thing that gave off light, but something like that's on paper or whatever. And my mom would walk by and she would say, turn on a light, you can't read in the dark. But I kind of could because I was a kid and kids' eyes work better, at least for a while, and in certain different ways. Not a biologist, but I do know that I used to be able to see things, specifically reading, in darker situations much easier back in the day when I was but a wee tyke in comparison to now. Nowadays, I want things that I'm trying to read to be generally brightly lit, which is why I like, mostly these days, reading on an iPad. Um, but I'm also finding that when I am sitting down to paint, I do need a relatively controlled lighting sort of scheme to make my eyes last longer during a painting session and to probably make the miniatures look a little better as well. Probably nobody actually paints in the dark or in the near dark. Everybody paints with some sort of lighting going on. But sometimes it's just the lighting that's in the room. Sometimes you're going to sit down because you can only paint on your dining room table and you bring out your kit and set things up and then you're going to paint and you're just using the normal ceiling lighting or whatever you've got going on. And that can be problematic in a couple of different ways. One issue is that if it's too dim over time, especially as you're getting older, you will find that you will give yourself eye strain, uh, which will generally lead to, lead to some sort of eye strain headache or something along those lines, which is not particularly something that you want because it will generally stop you from painting for you know very long. You'll paint for a certain amount of time until it hurts too much and then you kind of have to stop. And a brighter light, not too bright, but a nice brighter light can definitely help reduce the strain on your eyes and that will help you to paint longer and with less pain. Another important thing about light is the color of light. Now, we've probably all seen different light bulbs and things like that that have different uh, I believe they're called Kelvin ratings, and it's Kelvin with a with a K. And um, so you've got temperatures technically. That's how they they gauge light. So there's you know maybe 5800 Kelvin, which is generally heading a little bit more towards the daylight. You might even get up to 6500 Kelvin uh, degrees Kelvin. And then as you start going lower into like the 4800s, the 4200s, and even that, then you start getting into a lot warmer type of light. Like as an example of the difference between cool light and warm light, here in this image of me, you see this light over here, and it's pretty close to what you would consider to be white. And generally when we look at white color from a light, it's usually closer to daylight. And by daylight, we mean the kind of color that comes from the sun. Now, back over here in this corner, we've got these kind of old-timey uh, Edison-style lamps, and you'll notice how kind of orangey that color is. Now, if this was the only light source in the room, your brain uh, kind of just decides to just sort of set a little bit of white balance internally and just be like, all of a sudden, that seems like normal whitish light, usually. Like, that's kind of an extreme case. But the normal incandescent bulbs that many of us grew up having screwed into all the different light sockets in our house. And by incandescent, that means that there's a actual little filament inside there. And usually those bulbs were frosted, but not always. They gave off a pretty warm light. In the you know, realm of Kelvins, you're looking more in the, like the 4,600 degree Kelvin area and that kind of stuff, which is very different uh, than the light that we get from the sun, which like I said, is much higher up over 6,000 generally. So the, why is this important? Well, because if you're looking at everything constantly through the filter of a very warm light, the colors that you pick for your model are gonna be very different than you might expect. Like I said, your brain over time, and I don't mean like over years, but like over a short period of time will kind of, again, auto white balance, like 
your cell phone camera might and figure out, okay, well, this is actually the right color light and everything will be good. So you'll be looking at colors and thinking that this is a very warm color and maybe it's actually warmer than you might think or you might think that this is actually, you know, it, it, it can definitely mess with your perception of what colors to put onto your models. It can mess with your blending. It can mess with your shading. There's a lot of different things that can go on. Now, some people might say, well, shouldn't I then try to use a color for my paint, you know, the, my, my, my hobby area that matches where I'm going to play? And yes, to some degree, it's generally better for most people to work closer to a daylight color for color uh, you know, translation for you to look at something and go, this is the actual right color. It's better to work in daylight style uh, lighting than warmer style lighting for that. Because, you know, you might be in a place that's got fluorescent lighting because it's the store, which has a tendency to actually have a little bit of a green hue in some situations, depending on the bulbs and where you bought them and all that kind of junk. But there also might be big windows like because it's in like a strip mall. So there's a bunch of daylight coming in from there. So generally, most people you talk to, most painters will kind of generally swear by daylight balanced light for when they're painting. When I first started working after college in graphic design stuff, many of the different firms that I looked at and whatever and the firm that I ended up working at had a big honking expensive booth slash table that had these like perfectly calibrated daylight lights so you could bring in a print piece and look at it to say, make sure, mm, yes, this is definitely the right color and that kind of stuff. People don't do that so much anymore because so much of uh, color stuff is electronic in things that you're still doing for print or else you're just designing it for websites and then the color doesn't really matter because everyone's monitor is different. But when you are trying to, especially if you're trying to make things match within your own, say, army or war band or anything along those lines, having the right color balance and usually generally going a little bit more towards the daylight balance is a really good idea. Now for my table specifically, I've got and I have used for years, um, the, the kind of clamp on the edge sort of bendy, uh, you know, they've got like a, I don't know, they sometimes call them architect lamps and things like that. And they clamp onto your drawing table or your whatever table, I guess. And then they have like a shade and you put a bulb in them and they have a bendy arm. It's not like a gooseneck, but it's that sort of hinged thing. And they've worked well for me. And I generally always use two because then that way you get kind of light from both sides. Here's the photograph. And um, that really helps make the model, uh, you, you can really see the model better and you're not having to worry much as about the shadow side as you're painting and things like that. Um, I'm using daylight balanced LED bulbs that I've screwed in there. Um, LED bulbs don't get nearly as hot as incandescent or even to some degree uh, like those squirrely compact fluorescent bulbs. They, they, get, they, they get bright real quick. They have a good daylight balance generally. And also these are 100 watt that I'm using um, equivalent. So it, they're not using 100 watts of electricity, but they're giving off what would be equivalent to a 100 watt bulb. And it's really nice and bright. You'll also notice I've put pieces of tissue paper, uh, kind of taped them over to help also diffuse the light a little bit as well. Um, for me, I don't know that it's as important for when I'm actually painting since I have two light sources in that situation, but because I'm also starting to use this um, set up for lighting on Twitch and filming along. I want to also have that diffuse light to get rid of the harsh shadows. There are also plenty of people who like to use uh, LED strips and they will take like a piece of maybe metal or something like that. I can find some pictures here. You'll see that I've found on the internet of different examples of people and they, they take these LED strips that have all these little lights. It's almost like on a piece of tape and then you put it underneath this archway that you build that you attach to both ends of your table and then you've got something that you can get a nice smooth light from kind of almost all angles and, um, and, and, and you really, again, getting an even flat light on your model is super important. When you're trying to shoot like a good picture of somebody or something like that, you don't want there to be as much of a flat light. You want a little bit of a, a maybe a little drama, some shadow, and maybe like a key light and stuff like that. But when you're sitting and painting specifically for hours on a model, you want to have a nice flat light. So light from every angle or at least many angles is super helpful.
I can hear you and you're saying, but Uncle Adam, I don't have a nice place that I can set up to sit and paint. I have to go grab my stuff, pull it out, set it on the kitchen table, paint for a while and put it away. Well, there are also portable lights that are also helpful for you. I've been using this one for a long, long time. It's made by a company called Otlight. I don't know if they make this exact version anymore, but they make versions like it. And um, you can plug it into the wall, but this one is also, because it's big and chunky, has a battery. So. Um, there we go. Uh, so it's a daylight balanced, kind of like a fluorescent type bulb. And this is the switch. You open it up and you set it up and there you go. So now you've got some decent light right here that you can kind of set up so that you're like, kind of getting it in a spot where you can definitely nicely kind of light the model, but not have to, again, real harsh shadows or anything along those lines. If this is too big and these are not particularly cheap, um, actually our friend Sam Lens turned me on to one of these. And this is from a company called Bostitch, B-O-S-T-I-T-C-H, let's say. Uh, and it's something called the Connect. It starts with a K. And it looks kind of like a Wi-Fi antenna a little bit. But what it is, is it's a light. And it's got three settings. So this is the warmer color. And then this is the cooler color, which is more daylight balanced. And then if you hit it again, it turns on all the lights at once and gives it sort of a mix. So you get a preference to what you want to do. Now, uh, the other thing that's interesting too is it's also battery powered so you can unplug it charge it and take it on the go if you're one of those people who like paints at the local shop and things like that it gets a little dimmer when it's not plugged in i don't know if you'll be able to see it it's not super perceptible but it it it's got a usb so you could technically plug it into a usb bank uh one of those um you know those battery things and it would run for a good long time that way as well uh you know in whoops it's still on uh in comparison to uh you know, just the battery that's built into it, which is probably just in this little bottom part. There's a lot of different options out there. You can definitely take a look at your local lighting place. You can take a look at uh, you know, websites or whatever. But when you're on the go, the benefit for me now with this is it fits in my paint kit real easy. It's very small and that's really helpful. This, not quite as easy, but it still is a nice extra piece of light if I need to set it up. If you were not traveling with it, you were just taking it from closet to table and then back again, something like this would work actually quite well. Um, there's a lot of different options as well, different types of like desk type lamps and things like that. The important thing to look for is a decent amount of light, not too harsh, and also daylight balance. That's really kind of the important thing when you're trying to understand color and make sure that you are kind of matching the things that you've painted in the past. Also not changing your lighting around a bunch is probably pretty important. So take a look at if you've got enough light already, in your area, in your painting area, wherever you do your hobby, do you have enough light? Are you just using the ceiling light or maybe the light from a window? You want to have more light, especially as you get older, because it allows you to paint longer because of less eye strain. Color balance is pretty important. So definitely start to think about if you've already got some lighting and things like that, look at getting some relatively nicer or at least better bulbs that have more of a daylight balance. And then, you know, if you've got a, like a thing like I do, where you've got two lamps, Try to make the two bulbs the same. Buy them from the same company at the same time type of thing so they match up. And then if you are going to be doing something that uh, needs to be on the go a little bit more, take a look for some sort of portable light that you can take with you that will help you to be able to paint in whatever location you need to paint at and um, still have something small that you can slide into a backpack or your, your tackle box full of paints or whatever and uh, be on the go. Just wanted to mention that if you're watching this video on the day that it was published on YouTube, which would be Friday, June 26th, uh, 11 a.m. Central Time, I'm doing my first hobby stream on Twitch TV. No, twitch.tv slash tabletop minions. I'll be actually sitting and painting models. I'll be working with the folks from Board Game Geek and uh, Dice Tower. They're having their virtual gaming convention since they can't do the regular gaming conventions that both of those organizations do in different parts of the country. They're coming together this year and they're having a virtual gaming convention. And uh, I'll be on the main stage, which is to say Twitch, uh, and doing that from 11 a.m. Central to like 1 p.m. Central. I'll be teaching people how to paint, how to get started. And then I'll also be doing it again, same time on Saturday, the 27th. So take a look, uh, check it out. But going forward from this, Friday mornings, maybe not at 11, it might start a little bit earlier, but Friday mornings will be uh, hobby time with Uncle Adam on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tabletopminions.